insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 96, Cruising for the Star Wars Stamp of Approval. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my crafty and loving co-host, Michelle Whalen. <laughs> and why am I so crafty? <laughs> you are crafty because we were able to put together a cardboard condo for the cats yesterday. Right. <laughs> complete with windows and balconies mm-hmm. and everything else. And, and, of course, they've really only gone into the first floor so far. So far, yeah. We've got, what, four? Four floors, I think, on something it? like that. We'll have to, you know, share a Five picture. Five with the useless one that <laughs> right. the, the faux floor that Maddie put on. <laughs> Maddie put a roof. On yeah. That. This is what happens when you get too many deliveries from Amazon, and you're exactly. just like, hmm, what do we do with the boxes? Well, and the cats love the boxes to begin with. Oh, absolutely. So. And I think they were kind of upset that we were constructing something with yeah. them and not just letting yeah, them. But play. we've done that in the past, and yeah. The last Eventually. one we had lasted, what, three months before they tore it apart? Something like that. So we'll see how long this one goes. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about entertainment news. So in our Disney detective, we'll talk about Jungle Cruise getting a makeover. Another uh, political correct move on Disney's part. Mm-hmm. We'll also talk about Disney Plus quietly pulling some movies from kids' profile, some mm-hmm. of which... I was kind of scratching my head at, but Mm -hmm. okay, we'll talk about that. Yep. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, the United States Postal Service announces new stamps based on the droids from Star Wars. And we'll talk Mandalorian news. They have a release date for season three. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Yeah, I know they just announced the filming starting and stuff like that. Right, so so it's kind of the assumption of Right, based on what their production schedules typically look like, so we'll talk about that. And in our entertainment news, Scarlet Witch herself, Elizabeth Olsen, talks WandaVision. And how it won't feel so bizarre when people find out why it's a sitcom. And then Budweiser, for the first time in 30-some years, Mm -hmm. is sitting out the Super Bowl with ads. As are a number of other uh, Mm -hmm. big advertisers, too, as well. And then we'll talk about our insightful picks of the week. Uh, One that I literally just came up with. Yesterday, the day before, first episode, <laughs> loved the show, got to talk about it. Of course, it was going to be one of mine, but that's all right. I'm See, you could have taken WandaVision now. It's all right. I'll save that for next week. No, I already got that for next week. <sighs> Not I if I write it first. Dibs. I call dibs. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> before we get into all that, I uh, would uh, suggest folks subscribe to the podcast. This way, you'll get it first thing Monday morning at 8 o'clock when they uh, are released. You can subscribe to us. For our audio versions, look for Insights into Entertainment. For our video versions, you can get all of our podcasts listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Google, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, or Pandora, really any place you can get a a podcast. Mm -hmm. We would also suggest folks reach out to us and give us your feedback. Tell us what you want us to talk about. Tell us what you don't want us to talk about. (laughs) Uh, We can be reached out via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, we are at insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. Or you can reach us. All those links are available on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get started? We shall. All righty. I 
podcast or intro. That's too slow. Yeah, yeah. Work on that. Go for Disney Detective. So Disney has just announced that the popular Jungle Cruise, which was an opening day ride at both Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts, will be getting a re-theme uh, for guests to enjoy a brand new experience called River's Journey. Now, from what we understand, that it's just the name of the journey is is changing i guess the ride isn't going to be changing names it will still be called the jungle cruise um so the brand new uh walt disney imagineering endeavor uh is intended to celebrate the diversity and beauty of the world around us and the best part for fans for the famous jungle cruise spiel is the jungle cruise skipper will now be part of the storyline um so according to the official Disney Parks blog post about the upcoming uh, Jungle Cruise theme. They said, at Disney Parks, we continue to look for ways to enhance classic attractions and elevate the experience to all of our guests. Today, we're excited to share that we're building on the story of the Jungle Cruise at both Disneyland Park and Disneyland Resort and Magic Kingdom Park at Walt Disney World Resort to include a new adventure that'll stay true to the experience we know and love. More humor, wildlife, and a skipper heart, and also reflect and value the diversity of the world around us. There are no bigger fans of this attraction than our Imagineers. Um, so they, one of their Imagineers, who actually was a former Jungle Cruise skipper, posted a uh, a video um, that's been going around, you know, talking about it. Um, and saying, you know, that they're coming up with this new experience and this new story. And now you're going to kind of understand why you're going on this trek. It's not just, hey, let's get on a boat ride and go and see all these funny things. They're going to kind of link everything together. Um, you know, the scene where the rhino is, uh, you know, at the bottom of a pole and you have the various different people climbing up it. Now you're going to find out who those people are and why they're there and everybody kind of has a little part i guess to to play in the whole thing the other thing too that they were talking about in uh the article is that they were gonna kind of also go back to um aspects of the original imagineers um like mark davis had put into the story and kind of link things together in a better way to tell i guess a a bigger story than than what it's been so in some respects it's an enhancement of it and also again trying to make it a little bit more politically correct i guess you know in some cases too but they really didn't emphasize that it was basically more to to make it a bigger story and to kind of bring your skipper into you know the ride as well more than just him being a him or her being a, a tour guide for it so does this have anything to do or is it taking into account anything from the new jungle cruise movie or any of no from and that? and that's what a lot of people were thinking because again you know they know the the new jungle cruise movie so they were thinking oh are they going to overlay things of that you know into the movie and it doesn't sound like like any of that is is being done like you know, there may be because they talked about um, that there were two boats that used to be part of the cruise that at some point in time they just stopped using those boats. So it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe these boats will be coming, making a, a comeback in, in some way, shape or form. So I don't know if those boats are linked with the movie at all. So but it, it didn't sound like it was anything because when they redid Pirates of the Caribbean, they added aspects from the right, movie and right. they, they made it obvious that they were, you know, adding certain characters when they kind of revamped some of the things. But here for this revamp, it's basically we're kind of giving it a, a once over and making it bigger and better. And they've done um, enhancements um, throughout the years. Um, they do a Christmas overlay they right. do the the jingle cruise jingle jangle cruise or um and then there was some other little overlay that they've done 
you know, as well. And then also they've expanded it to, you know, now there's the restaurant right, that they have right. too. So that's kind of an expansion of, of the ride too. So now they're kind of going back to the ride and, and doing a more, uh, you know, doing a bigger story with it than just, you know, the, the regular original, you oh, know, jungle should, cruise. You know, any, anytime you want to enhance a ride like mm-hmm. that should make it better, should be interesting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, it's always been a, a favorite of mine and not only just the ride, but what is the spiel going to be? Because there are some classic lines that the, the skippers, you know, will the say backside the backside of water. of water. But then, you know, every now and then there are these new puns that get added in. And that's what's always, yeah. you know, what always makes it really more so than than anything else. So it'll be interesting to see how they, you know, enhance it a, a little bit more. So do they have a launch date for the revamp ride? No, no. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, no dates a- as of yet. Obviously, with California, um, you know, still being closed, they can, you know, do the overlay. Probably, you know, they might do there first and then, um, you know, in, in Florida. But as of this point, I think it's also still a lot of storyboard is still, mm. you know, being worked sure. on. So, cool. so no dates as of yet. So let's talk about. What movies Disney Plus is pulling from the kids' profile? Yeah, so last fall, the Walt Disney Company had launched Stories Matter, which is a consorted effort uh, by its various branches uh, to reckon with the company's history of racial stereotypes and negative depictions. Um, in a statement, they had said, we can't change the past, but we acknowledge it, learn from it, and move forward together to create a tomorrow that today can only be, dream- uh, can only be dream of, um, that we can only dream of. So with the launch of the campaign came, you know, additional, uh, they started doing content warnings on a number of Disney Plus streaming titles. Um, so as noted by several outlets, Disney Plus actually removed, um, titles that had a, um, uh, that had these advisory descriptions from kids' profiles. Um, some of the titles included Peter Pan, The Aristocats, Lady and the Tramp, and Dumbo, um, The Jungle Book, and also the live action version of Swiss Family Robinson. Now, the movies can still be found on a regular Disney Plus account, but for profiles that have actually been set up for children, there was already a um, a rating limit. So anything that was TV 7, VF, and G would be uh, able to be seen on a child's uh, profile. Now these other movies have kind of been pulled, um, you know, from it as well. Um, so what, you know, obviously... The reason behind it is with the Aristocats, Lady and the Tramp, and Swiss Family Robinson, they feature um, racist caricatures of East Asian people. Um, Dumbo includes a sequence which a group of crows perform a song and dance in the style of a the racist minstrel show. Um, and then obviously in Peter Pan, you have the portrayal of indigenous people um, and you know, in, in that aspect, um, as well. So obviously they haven't pulled the movies. They know they're, you know, classic Disney movies. They just have these warnings, you know, saying that there might be some sensitive material if you do watch them. And then again, they have pulled them, um, you know, from the, um, uh, from children's profiles. And obviously it, it, you know, they, they, have seen this this change again with the park because you know we know Splash Mountain is getting the makeover to kind of bring out the insensitive aspect of, of that and then obviously with Jungle Cruise part of that you know as well bringing out the uh you know the the areas that could be seen as as racist and kind of changing it to make it more you know diverse for everyone. So talk a little bit about the profile aspect of it. With Disney Plus, you obviously can have multiple people have profiles right. and preferences. Is there a distinction 
between a child profile or a youth profile and an adult profile? Yeah, when you when you set up the profile, now it's been a while, it's been probably over a year since we've set up a profile, but when you do set one up, it asks, you know, is this a, you know, an adult or is this a child? I've never we've never set up one for a child to see, you know, what it looks like because also now you'll notice there's a lot more movies you know that are being added you're now starting to see a lot of movies from fox that are being added and the idea was you know it wasn't just going to be g-rated movies obviously you have all of the mcu you know the majority of the mcu movies are there and they're in a lot of cases pg pg 13 we've never tried the filter to see what it looks like it might be interesting just to kind of set up a, a test one to kind of play with it to see um you know what comes up so and this kind of goes back to an article we talked about a few weeks ago about disney bringing some of the selection from hulu that mm -hmm. was more of a mature right audience in in uh intent for it right and having that ability to filter mm -hmm. automatically i am curious so do you have the ability to go in and dictate what the kids can see and can't see on the profile or is that left entirely up to disney at this yeah point? i don't know again we've we've never played with it so it'll be interesting you know it would be interesting like i said to just kind of play around with it yeah. to talk about you know at a at another time like hey we played around with this or you know if any of our viewers have have done that send us a, a note and let us know um you know do you tell it that you only want disney animated movies or you know anything certain um rating right. you know i i don't know how how it works well i'm glad to see that they're they're making they're they're making a smart choice here mm -hmm. and that they're removing it from the children but they're not removing it in general so the parents want right. to sit there they and can educate make their the, kids while right, they're doing exactly. it right exactly and you know, they're, they're not going the route they did with Song of the South, where Song right, of the South just, just doesn't exist to Disney anymore. Right. And, you know, the other thing to note, too, is that, you know, they did make sequels to Peter Pan, The Jungle Book, and Lady and the Tramp. And those are, I guess you could say, cleaner versions. So those are actually available right. on um, the, the kids' profiles. The kids can watch those. So it's just, it would be, in, you know, it's like... You don't want to say, you know, and and here's where, you know, your love of Star Wars and 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 your originals like you don't want to go and remake it to make it more suitable, you know, right. but in some instances, it's a shame that. You know, some movies... However, if I did have the power to dictate what can and can't be seen, I could at least edit out the fact that the sequels True. actually existed. True. And and that's the thing is where, like, Song of the South, it's the whole movie. It's the whole premise behind right. it. You know, how do you redo Song of the South in a positive, you know, whereas a scene with, uh, you know, in Peter Pan with indigenous people... Okay, you could probably take that part out and you would still have a whole movie right. or, you know, the Aristocats with, you know, or any of these Asian characters. You could put an Asian character in and not have it be that stereotypical 1950s sure. Asian American type yeah. thing. So, well, kudos to Disney for, for mm -hmm. being on top of that and giving yeah. us the option. Mm hmm. That was all we had for our Disney detective. Yep. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our tales from the edge of the galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today 
at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Thanks for your critiques. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. (laughs) So your mail will soon feature characters from a galaxy far, far away, thanks to a new line of stamps coming to the U.S. Postal Service. Just my mail, not my female? You're such a dad. In an official release, the USPS said its latest collection of stamps will salute Star Wars droids such as C-3PO and R2-D2 for the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. Uh, beloved BB-8 from the latest Star Wars trilogy will, of course, be making an appearance alongside some other fan favorites like IG-11, C-110P, who's also known as Chopper, uh, K-2SO, D-O, L337 and GXK, who was a power droid, along with 21B, who was a surgical droid. Um, in addition to the droids, the backgrounds of the 20 stamps will pay tribute to some of the most famous settings in the Star Wars universe, such as the floating cloud city, um, that became, uh, that can be found above the planet of Ves- uh, Bespin. Um, Greb Breading, is the designer of the stamps, while William Grecker uh, served as the art director. Um, The USPS said that the new collection also honors uh, Lucasfilm's legacy and its parent company, Disney, for its commitment to science, technology, engineering, and math, known as STEM, uh, the STEM community. Uh, Most notably in the partnership the company's partnership with FIRST, which is for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, which happens to be a global nonprofit that aims to inspire children from pre-K to grade 12 to consider a career in STEM in collaboration with the Star Wars Force for Change initiative, which gives FIRST the ability to teach even more young children. Uh, U.S. Uh, Postal Service will release more details on the stamps, including their release date later this year. Well, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I'm not a stamp collector myself. Right. But, you know, anything Star Wars is cool, as long as it's not the sequel trilogies. <laughs> well, then some of the stamps you can't have, because some of the stamps are from... Some of the stamps are from the... So those will be the ones that we we use. The other well, ones we hold yeah, on to. L337 <clears throat> from Solo, we can't use either. No? Can't use him? No. Yeah. But K2SO we can. Yeah, K2SO, we like him. Because that's Alan Tudyk. And, right. You know, we'll talk about him a little later. Right. But I'm sure they'll probably, you know, and, and as they've done before, they usually come out with some sort of like Collectors, commemorative yeah. artworky type thing. I know I still have from when the original Disney stamps right. uh, came out. You know, I still have that. So, they, you yeah, know, they might come yeah. out with some cool And they're nice-looking stamps. They're no, kind of they... odd-shaped. Right, right. But they definitely are nice-looking stamps. So, you know, because we mail out, like, five things here. Well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> if we buy them, I'm guaranteed to collect them because I never mail anything. Because you never mail anything. So, you know, kind of cool. Another thing to collect for, for those of you that are, are collectors of of various things. Well, and, and you know, the funny thing is I didn't realize in this modern digital age that collector stamps were still a thing. Oh yeah. And, and you know, I still remember not even that long ago, you know, when you go to the post office, what pretty stamps do you have? You know, what, what nice, you know, and, and it's something I've never actually asked that going to a post office. Well, I never do either, but it was one of those things when I was going to the post office, somebody in front of me was like, hey, what kind of you know cool stamps do you got? Nice. But I remember not that long ago, I guess a couple of months ago, when we when they were ha- when the postal service was having all of these issues and everybody said, Well, if you go out and buy, you know, one book of stamp, you know, that'll help give the postal service a boost of, of revenue. And they happen to have like these horror stamps. Mm. I still have my two sheets because I haven't mailed anything. Nice. Well, we also didn't do Christmas cards this year. So that's normally true, that's yeah. my big 
thing that I, you know, would mail out would be. Yeah. Because everything else we do digital. Right. So. Yeah. Cool. So we have some Mandalorian news. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So obviously Disney Plus's show, you know, second season created, you know, more conversation than the first season did, um, you know, hooking in both the casual and the diehard Star Wars fan alike. And season two left things in an interesting place with Grogu deciding, you know, to leave Mando and go train with Luke Skywalker. Um, you know, so now everybody's like, okay, when when's the next season coming? And then, of course, we got that little hint at the end about Book of Boba Fett. So the production um, list reports that The Mandalorian Season 3 is set to begin filming in L.A. on April 5th of 2021. So this report remains unconfirmed as of now, but the date does kind of line up with the Star Wars timeline that Disney and Lucasfilm uh, executives have been hinting at. Um, and of course, we've been getting various stories each week about it. So assuming that the report is accurate and the start date provides us with a, a fairly good idea, we kind of, you know, you kind of have an idea of when episode, uh, season three is going to, um, come out. So now for season two, if, you know, you can remember back then, season two actually began filming in October of 2019 and finished production early in March, right? when the pandemic uh, kind of started and then the season actually premiered in October. So the rule of thumb is usually it's a year from when they start is when it actually ends up showing, uh, showing up and, and airing on Disney plus. So using that, if April, 2021 is the production date, you're not going to see episode three of Mandalorian until April, 2022. And that kind of syncs up with everything because the other thing was that we got word that the spinoff of Book of Boba Fett would actually be premiering first. So we're going to get that season before Mandalorian, and that is set to actually premiere December of 2021 because that they've actually already started filming as of as of right now. Um, and then of course it kind of goes with the way the, you know, they, they don't want everything star Wars coming out at the same time. They want to do it, you know, let this come out and let everybody watch this, give it a couple of months. Let's do the next one so that they're not saturating, which is what you had been concerned about when we heard all of these different shows coming out it kind of sounded like that's one right on top of the other on top of the other and it it doesn't seem like they're doing it that way and i don't know if it's because of covid because they can't do it that way because they can't produce everything or if it was kind of their thought process of here's our roadmap for the next couple of years and we're just going to take our time to make sure that it, it's good content and not rush it, which it almost seems like they're doing. Um, so, yeah. So as of right now, again, no confirmation as to when it's coming out. But if they, again, follow their roadmap that they've done before, it'll be April of 2022 at this point. So we had talked uh, on an earlier podcast about there being a time hop. Mm -hmm. Do we know if that time hop is starting with season three, mid season three, and have they revealed anything mm -mm. about the plot at yeah. this point? Yeah. So we're all left in the dark and we're waiting a long time. Yep. In a galaxy far, far, far away. Far away. <laughs> okay. So that was all we had for our, uh, tales from the edge of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. We'll take a quick break and be back with our entertainment news. Mm-hmm. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. 
check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for entertainment news. <laughs> wow. That was just like, just go already. <laughs> so Elizabeth Olsen says that the explanation behind the WandaVision sitcom, which is still to come in the remaining six episode uh, episodes of the first Marvel series, uh, didn't feel so bizarre after she had a meeting with the producer, Kevin Feige. Um, it's set after the events of Avengers Endgame, where an undusted Wanda returns to life without partner vision. And, you know, she basically relocates this unusual couple in the suburbs of Westville. Um, in this new reality, which is inspired by decades of classic sitcoms and seemingly created by Wanda, slowly it starts to unravel as the couple begins to suspect that everything is not as it seems when channeling such shows as Bewitched and Malcolm in the Middle. She said, they're just trying to fit in. They're trying not to be found out by their neighbors that they're super powered beings. Uh, the reason it's a sitcom show will show itself later on and she said when kevin told me it didn't feel so bizarre it kind of felt like a great way to start our story um so this is a show that we've been watching from the beginning um there was a little bit more that was hinted in last night's episode we won't really talk about it because we don't want to give it away as a spoiler if you know those of you uh watching haven't seen it yet but you know, th they talk about the show and how, you know, Wanda's trying to protect everything in her bubble and, you know, she's, you know, trying to do everything to, to keep it together. And then, um, you know, they talk about how uh, Kevin, um, who's produced all of the, the MCU movies, says that, you know, Disney Plus was kind of the perfect place to do this series because it wasn't something that would have really played out well in an actual movie. It needed to kind of be done as a, as a television series. And it was, you know, able to, for him to put, you know, his, his two loves together, you know, the, the classic sitcoms along with, you know, the Marvel universe um, and kind of blend them together. Um, I know when we were watching it, you know, the first couple of episodes we were kind of like, huh? Like, and I know that there were a lot of people that kind of felt that way. It was kind of like, you really liked it, but you had no idea what was going on. And I knew it was going to be one of those, just sit back and, and watch just, just take it all in. It'll happen. It'll, you know, so I'm, I'm interested, you know, especially after last night's episode to kind of see, you know, more of the reasoning, um, you know, behind everything. We're getting little hints. Um, and the other thing that's really, you know, great about this uh, is that there's all these different Easter eggs hidden throughout the show and there was actually a separate article i don't know if i sent it to you or not that talked about another easter egg that somebody kind of happened upon and and people were like yeah i gotta go back and watch the first one and it's like east each easter egg it's like they started it in the first episode and it kind of kept growing into you know the last episode just from from yesterday so yeah, I mean, we've certainly enjoyed the show, mm -hmm. even though we've been confused right. pretty severely <laughs> the first few episodes. Right. Um, I like the show in its comedic style that mm -hmm. they do it in. Right. Uh, the nostalgia that comes back mm -hmm. from it. But it was kind of frustrating for me to have them dropping all these bizarre things and not giving you anything to try and figure it out. Yeah. It was one of those, all right, you, you're in it for the ride. You just mm -hmm. sit there, watch it and, you know, right. 
we'll start explaining stuff to you in a few episodes. Right, right. Uh, the one thing in the last episode that is definitely worth noting is there's a scene that <laughs> happens. You were so excited. I was, I was elated uh, at this scene because quite, you know, deliberately in the scene, mm-hmm. you see it's there. It, it's a, it's a setup like a field lab, right? Mm-hmm. And they've got all different types of technology and <laughs> TVs and monitors and oscilloscopes and stuff. And right there on the counter on the table in front of you, there is the mixer that we use on this show. Um, <laughs> you used, felt like such a celebrity when you saw that. It was. It, I thought it was hilarious. It's a Rodecaster Pro that we use. Uh-huh. They had the same exact one, <laughs> uh, completely unmodified, sitting right there just because yeah. it looks so cool. Right. Um, so I, I got to, yeah, I, I admit, I, I geeked out over that. Yeah, you're like, pause, was, rewind oh, go, it. Go back, let's see. Oh, that, that's it right there. That's my that's my mixer. And and it was funny because le- last night's episode was the first one that I think we ever, like, stopped it, rewound, stopped it well, a couple of different so times. Well, because there were so many reveals. Right. So there was a whole bunch of cameos from secondary characters right. from different parts of the Marvel Universe. Right. Three individual ones that we could name there. That right. It was kind of cool because it's sort of. Right. Not only did that episode sort of advance all the bizarre stuff in the background that was happening that right. you didn't know about that you were speculating on. Right. Right. But it also started to tie together the entire Marvel Universe. Right. And also we were doing it too for, for Maddie's sake also for her to understand. Correct. Yeah. You know, hey, did you know this is who this is? Oh, Okay. Right. Start while. Okay, well, pause. Let, and then let, I had to do the other two for you guys because you didn't recognize Right, because I was like, I think I know who this is. I'm just not sure. And yeah. yeah so, so it was a fun episode, yeah. you know, from that a- aspect. And but I, look for the Roadcaster <laughs> Pro in the scene. In the it, scene. There's actually two scenes that show I'm surprised you didn't, like, get screenshots to, to show, like, look, there's Yeah, there. well. It's okay. Just just look for it. You'll but see I think it. it'll also be it's one of those shows too where because the episodes are only a half hour long, I could totally see going back once it's all done and kind of watching it from the beginning all in one sure, yeah. shot. You know, so it would be kind of an extended movie. Yeah. Um, you know, like a two part movie. Uh, but to kind of catch see if you catch the things you know, watching it back to back as opposed to week to week. Right, right. So Budweiser in the Super Bowl, big shocker here. Yeah, so Budweiser will not be running a commercial during the Super Bowl for the first time in 37 years. Instead, the Anheuser-Busch company uh, will be marketing using marketing dollars to support COVID-19 vaccine awareness and access. In the weeks leading up to Super, uh, the Super Bowl, Budweiser plans to run its Super Bowl ad digitally. Uh, the spot will focus on resilient Americans during the uh, co- uh, COVID uh, pandemic, including a group of healthcare workers uh, who were the first to receive the vaccine. Uh, actress Rashida Jones, who is known for her roles on The Office and Parks and Recreation, will actually narrate the spot. Uh, the beer brand also plans to donate a percentage of its advertising airtime for 2021 to the Ad Council and COVID Collaborative's Vaccine Education Initiative. Uh, Budweiser will support its effort with additional campaigns throughout the year. Uh, the company also isn't entirely giving up promoting its beer. Uh, Budweiser is giving U.S. consumers who are at least 21 years of age a free beer if you visit a beer on a beeronbud.com between January 25th and February 7th. So we got to go log on so we can get a, a free beer. I, I'm guessing it's probably a coupon to go and pick up a can. I, I don't know. I haven't gone. Um, but their other brands, which include uh, Michelob Ultra, Bud Light, and Bud Light Seltzer Lemonade will have in-game ads during the Super Bowl. Um, And as we mentioned before, Budweiser isn't the only iconic brand sitting out the game. Uh, PepsiCo and Coca-Cola has said that they won't be running in-game ads for their namesake sodas. Uh, Pepsi instead is focusing on its sponsorship of the halftime show, which will be starring The weekend. 
and uh, PepsiCo's other brands, including Mountain Dew and Frito-Lay, will have some commercials during uh, the game. In a statement to CNBC, Coke says that it has chosen to focus on investing in the right resources. Uh, the t- pandemic obviously has upended the beverage giant's um, business because fewer drinks are being consumed away from the house, and its revenue had actually fallen 13% during the first nine months of 2020. You wouldn't know it from our house because of how much (laughs) Diet Coke (laughs) we drink. I would have thought we were helping them out. Um, You know, so last year's Super Bowl drew about 100 million viewers, but attracted those eyeballs, you know, come with a hefty price tag. Um, You know, a 30 second commercial, and we've talked about this, you know, before, goes for, you know, $5.5 million. Um, you know, and in 2020, it was at like 5.6 million. And of course, Super Bowl happens in the beginning of the year. So, you know, it was at the start of, of everything. Um, so now, um, it'll be interesting to see what commercials, you know, are being played because people will be home watching, um, hopefully not having too many parties or party, you know, small gatherings, uh, wherever they are. Um, but it'll be interesting to see because again, Budweiser is always, you know, the big commercials. It's always the ones you want to see, you know, they're always the one with, you know, that have some sort of iconic catchphrase or even the ones with the Clydesdales. Um, so it's nice that they're still putting something together. Again, it'll be digitally kind of, you know, honoring, those, uh, you know, those healthcare workers, but we won't be seeing it obviously during the game. Yeah. I gotta say, I kind of have mixed feelings about this. Like they're, they're, they're doing the right thing Mm -hmm. for the right reason. Right. And I can't fault them for that. But of all the things in the world that are not normal, Mm -hmm. having those commercials kind of would have been a welcome change, a Mm -hmm. welcome set of normalcy. If, if, they stuck to the normal plan there. Right, right. And and not having that, I don't know, it kind of detracts yeah. a little well, bit. Because I, I don't watch the really the game anymore at this point because right. I don't care who wins. Right. You know, we And I'm probably not even going to be in a football pool this year. Right. <laughs> right. Not that you we know, endorse that because gambling not, is illegal. Right, because gambling is illegal unless um, you go to Atlantic City or but Vegas. like, I don't know. It's like... Well, and and didn't they have like an, a very emotional one after nine yeah. eleven? You know, where it was kind of like very patriotic, and you know, and and we kind of need that now too with everything. Yeah, like going I, I kinda, on. I kind of had hoped that they would sort of, you know, stick to business as usual mm-hmm. and give us that escape that we need. Yeah. That you know, bring us together because you know you, you talk about not having big gatherings, the NFL is restricting the in-person appearances of right. like 22,000 people. Right, right. So like even even that type of stuff where your halftime show that, that involves the audience is going right. to be that drastically gonna, different. Right, and the stadium's going to look kind of yeah weird. Like are they going to put like all those blank people, you yeah. know, the, the cutouts that they do, you yeah, know, it's for almost some of the like other I, games. I wish if you could do things normally, you keep doing things in the world because most stuff is not normal. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll see. I'm we'll sure see. It'll be different and yeah. we'll see how things are. Yeah. Yeah. So that was all we had for our entertainment news. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick of the week is from Netflix, and it is My Next Guest Needs No Introduction with David Letterman. So TV legend David Letterman teams up with some fascinating global figures in an in-depth interview and curiosity-fueled excursion into his uh, this talk show. Um, my Next Guest Needs No Introduction, commonly referred to as My Next Guest is an American streaming television talk show that's hosted by David Letterman, and it actually premiered uh, on Netflix in January of 2018. Uh, The series consists of interviews uh, with one guest per episode, 
both inside and outside of the studio setting. And the show, you know, has received general uh, positive reviews for its format. Uh, you know, Letterman's hosting, his choice of guests, and his insightful conversation have received praise. Um, it's an interesting little format. It's nothing like what his original talk show was because there's really no band it's you know they're on a a stage and it's a very bare stage and it's just him and his guest and probably only a couple of hundred people um there you know at the time and what was interesting was um some of the more recent episodes that um he had a couple that were actually filmed since covid started he actually went to the celebrity's home and they show them, you know, wearing masks and, you know, they say, you know, okay, we've both been tested. So we're okay. And we'll sit six feet apart. Um, um, where some of the late, the earlier episodes, they'll, um, you know, they'll be in this, uh, theater doing the interview and then they'll show a shot from, you know, a couple of days before, a couple of days after where they're actually at the person's house or they're just kind of, wandering around so it's an interesting um uh setup and again it's just one episode um one one guest per per show um he interviewed george clooney he did barack obama and uh the barack obama episode was actually uh that interview was one of his first interviews after leaving leaving office um that he had done on the talk show network um you know even you know and and i'm not a fan of of kim kardashian at all but the interview with her was actually kind of enlightening and and they talk about you know various different things from you know oj simpson to you know to still not a jew still not a jew to going to law school and and they end up going to like the local cvs to buy (laughs) To, to buy school supplies you know he kind of jokes to her it's like all right well let's just go to cvs you know um and then one of like i said one of the more recent episodes is he interviews lizzo and you know in her house and you know you get this background of her that you know most people you know don't know about and just very fascinating um interview because again much different from his show where it was a lot more comedy and and things so this is a little bit more you know serious you know topics and it's you know it goes from barack obama uh george clooney howard stern you know tina fey so various different people um he interviews so if you're into watching you know a talk show interview type show this might be one uh, to watch good pick thank you so my pick this week is not a documentary oh my gosh if i get enough of these in a row i can stop actually prefacing it by saying it's not a documentary (laughs) right right so my pick this week is resident alien on sci-fi an alien crashes on earth and hides in a remote colorado mountain town after assuming the identity of the town doctor His nefarious mission is threatened when he realizes one of the townspeople, a nine-year-old boy, can see his true alien form. Harry, the quote resident alien, slowly begins to wrestle with the moral dilemma of his secret mission on Earth as he learns to fit in with the humans in the nearby fictional town of Patience, Colorado. It's a uh, dramedy-style science fiction show that's a nostalgic blend of my favorite Martian and Eureka, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's been described similar to Northern Exposure. See? I, I never watched it, so okay. I, I, I couldn't say. See? And I, I picked up on that for sure. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it features Alan Tudyk as the alien. Um, and, you know, once again, it just shows how much of a brilliant actor he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he plays a convincing human. Right. <laughs> um, but he's clearly alien. I mean, he, right. he it comes across, like I, I, I mentioned my favorite Martian, but, you know, my favorite Martian was played not like a Martian, but like a human. Right. And he plays this character like an alien trying to be human. Right. His reactions, there's 
little asides. There's narration that he does. You get to hear what his thoughts are before he says something. Right. The quirkiness yeah. behind him. And it was one where you are knee slappingly laughing. Mm -hmm. And just as soon as you catch your breath from that, there's another scene that you you're hilarious again. And then there's right. another, and it just from, from uh scene to scene, it's so well done, but it's done in a way that's not, you know, uh, a standard half hour sitcom type thing. Right. You know, it's comedy, but it's comedy. It's, it's situational comedy, but in a drama set environment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's one scene where he's, he's taken the human form and he's learning how to talk and he's watching this particular scene from an old episode of law and order over and over and over right. until he masters the language. Right. So everything that he does in his mannerisms are sort of centralized on how a episode of law and order goes. Right. Because he doesn't know who humans are or how they, you know, he, he ends up on planet on the planet by accident. So he's in this person's house and he's, you know, watching to kind of learn to learn the language right. and just has these mannerisms that he, yeah. <laughs> no normal human being, you know, would have. And it was, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed it, uh, you know, as well. Yeah, it's very clever. Mm -hmm. um, he does a fantastic job in, in his portrayal, again, as this alien trying right. to be human. Right. And and so far, the supporting cast that, mm -hmm. that they've put together here, all you can tell they all have their own intricate backstories and quirkiness right. and personalities. Right. So there's a, a tremendous amount of character development mm -hmm. that goes in that feeds into all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, very good show. Resident Alien on Sci-Fi. It airs Wednesdays at 9 Eastern. So, I think that's all we had this week. Mm -hmm. Did we have any afterthoughts that we want to go over or anything? Nope. No? All right. In that case, I would implore people to subscribe to the podcast. You can get uh, audio versions of the podcast. If you look us up as Insights into Entertainment, you can get video versions of all of our shows. If you look up Insights into Things, we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go down the whole list. Okay. Uh, we would also uh, encourage people to reach out to us and give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are at insights into things. The audio versions of all of our podcasts can be found at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And if you don't remember any of those other things and you just want to go to our main website, that would be insightsintothings.com. And I think that's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,